Mind your decisions, I'm Presh Talwalker. Quadratic equations are a standard topic in algebra class. You probably learned to solve them using Brahmagupta's quadratic formula, which has been known for nearly 1400 years. x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Students are typically taught to memorize this formula, but some students struggle with the formula and it would be nice to have another intuitive way. The story is not over yet. News outlets today are talking about a new way to make quadratic equations easy. The method comes from Po Shen Lo, who writes about a different way to solve quadratic equations. As written on the website, the individual steps have been discovered by ancient mathematicians, but the combination of the steps is not commonly known. For those that don't know, Po Shen Lo has math degrees from Caltech, Cambridge, and Princeton. He's also a professor at Carnegie Mellon University, and he's the coach of the U.S. Mathematical Olympiad team. He coached the team to its first ever back-to-back -back number one ranked victories in 2015 and 2016, and he coached them to their second ever back-to-back -back number one ranked victories in 2018 and 2019. If Professor Lowe is suggesting a problem-solving method, it is definitely worth trying. Before we get to the method, let's do a motivating example. x squared minus 8x plus 15 is equal to 0. We'll solve this by the method of factoring. We want to find two numbers such that their product is 15 and their sum is equal to 8. We can do this by considering the factors of 15. We readily get two numbers of 3 and 5. Therefore, we can factor the original equation and we'll get two solutions of 3 and 5. Students are taught this method. The question is, can we generalize the idea? Let's consider a general quadratic equation. The first thing we'll do is we'll divide both sides by a. This will make the coefficient of x squared equal to 1. Then we will write capital B for the coefficient on x and capital C for the constant term. We can write any quadratic equation as x squared plus capital BX plus C is equal to 0. So let's try solving this by factoring. We want two numbers such that their product is equal to c and their sum is equal to negative b. If we could do that, we could factor the equation and we would have our two roots. But how can we do that? Well, if we have a sum of negative b, that's the same thing as saying we want an average of negative b over two for two numbers. We would then wanna see if those numbers have a product of c. Now in class, we typically consider c and look for factors and then see which factors have the sum of negative b. A key insight in this method is to flip this process around. Let's consider the sum and then try and work out the product. So we want two numbers that have an average of negative b over two. These can take the form negative b over two plus some increment z and negative b over two minus some increment z. We then multiply these together and set them equal to c. This is nice because we have a convenient formula here. It's a difference of squares. We have b squared over 4 minus z squared, and that's equal to c. We can then readily solve this equation for z, and then we have some candidates. We have these two numbers for x, and what's nice is that we've actually found two numbers that have an average of negative b over 2, and we found two numbers that have a product of c. Therefore, these do satisfy what we need. We could factor the equation and we have found solutions. So these are the relevant formulas and a similar thing like this is taught in Germany. But a key insight in this method is that you don't have to memorize anything. The method is to consider values negative b over two plus or minus z and then solve for z by setting the product of these two values equal to c. So let's take the original equation x squared minus 8x plus 15 is equal to 0. We want to consider two values that have an average of negative b over 2, which is an average of 4. So we want 4 plus z and 4 minus z. We want their product to be equal to 15. We take the product of these and it'll be a difference of squares. 4 squared minus z squared is equal to 15. We can readily solve this equation and get z is equal to plus or minus 1. We then take plus or minus 1 from negative b over 2. So we have 4 minus 1, which is equal to 3, 
and we have 4 plus 1, which is equal to 5. And these are the two values we found earlier when we were solving this equation. Let's now consider an example that's harder to factor. x squared minus 4x plus 6 is equal to 0. We want the two values to be negative b over 2 plus or minus z. Negative b over 2 is equal to 2. So we have 2 plus z and 2 minus z. We then take their product and set that equal to 6. This works out to be a difference of squares. 2 squared minus z squared is equal to 6. We then readily solve for z squared, and that's equal to negative 2. Taking the square root of both sides, we get z is equal to plus or minus i times the square root of 2. We thus have the two values 2 plus i root 2 and 2 minus i root 2. These two values do have the proper sum and the proper product, therefore they are roots to the original equation. We can compactly write them as 2 plus or minus i root 2. Let's do a final example. 2x squared minus 4x plus 10 is equal to 0. The first thing to notice is the coefficient on x squared is equal to 2. We'll divide the entire equation by 2 to make sure it's equal to 1. We have x squared minus 2x plus 5 is equal to 0. Now we'll solve as before. Negative b over 2 is equal to 1, so we have 1 plus z and 1 minus z. We want to multiply these together to get a product of 5. We'll do some simplification and we'll solve that z is equal to plus or minus 2i. Therefore, we have the values of 1 plus or minus 2i. These have the proper sum and the proper product, and therefore, they are roots to the original equation. So now let's recap. We start with the general quadratic equation, and we'll divide it by a if needed, so that the coefficient on x squared is equal to 1. We'll end up with a quadratic equation that'll be x squared plus capital BX plus C is equal to 0. We then consider values of negative b over 2 plus or minus z, and then we'll solve for z by setting the product equal to c. We will thus end up with two numbers that have the proper sum and the proper product, and therefore they will be roots to the original quadratic equation. What I've described is the idea of the method. For a formal description, I highly recommend you check out Po Shen Lo's website. He gives a history of the steps and a precise explanation of why each step is mathematically justified. Do check it out. Finally, I want to thank Professor Lowe for providing feedback to an earlier draft of the video. I think this method could be very useful for many students around the world. You should definitely give it a try. Thanks for making Mind Your Decisions one of the best channels on YouTube. As always, thanks for watching and thanks for your support.